in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose grace, though sinners, we are made just, and though pitiable, made blessed, stand, we pray, by your works, stand by your gifts, that those justified by faith may not lack the courage of perseverance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles After the discussion had gone on a long time, Peter stood up and addressed the apostles and the elders. My brothers, he said, you know perfectly well that in the early days God made his choice among you. The pagans were to learn the good news from me and so become believers. In fact, God, who can read everyone's heart, showed his approval of them by giving the Holy Spirit to them, just as he had to us. God made no distinction between them and us, since he purified their hearts by faith. It would only provoke God's anger now, surely, if you imposed on the disciples the very burden that neither we nor our ancestors were strong enough to support. Remember, we believe that we are saved in the same way as they are, through the grace of the Lord Jesus. This sided the entire assembly, and they listened to Barnabas and Paul describing the signs and wonders God had worked through them among the pagans. When they had finished, it was James who spoke. My brothers, he said, listen to me. Simeon has described how God first arranged to enlist a people for his name out of the pagans. This is entirely in harmony with the words of the prophets, since the scriptures say, After that I shall return and rebuild the fallen house of David. I shall rebuild it from its ruins and restore it. Then the rest of mankind, all the pagans who are consecrated to my name, will look for the Lord, says the Lord who made this known so long ago. I rule then, that instead of making things more difficult for pagans who turn to God, we send them a letter telling them merely to abstain from anything polluted by idols, from fornication, from the meat of strangled animals, and from blood. For Moses has always had his preachers in every town, and is read aloud in the synagogues every Sabbath. The Word of the Lord Proclaim the wonders of the Lord among all the peoples. O sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. O sing to the Lord. Bless His name. Proclaim the wonders of the Lord among all the peoples. Proclaim His help day by day. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Proclaim the wonders of the Lord among all the peoples. Proclaim to the nations, God is king. The world he made firm in its place. He will judge the peoples in fairness. Proclaim the wonders of the Lord among all the peoples. Alleluia. Alleluia! Christ has risen, He who created all things, and has granted His mercy to men. Alleluia! The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to His disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you, remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, 
she will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, what is your definition of love? Is it a love without pain? Love without struggle? Love only leads to happiness? Love with benefits or sacrificial love. I think the list can go on, but when we receive love, is it only for a while or that after a while we become less interested? In that case, that is not love, but only a feeling to be fulfilled. As a human beings, we often hear that there's nothing free in this world. I can't agree more, but that's how the world works. But as for us, the follower of Christ, we then should love differently. A sacrificial love. Love that gives oneself without expecting anything in return. Of course, it is difficult for many of us, and me too, for those who hurt me. But that what makes us human, where in our daily conversion, where we recognize that we need God's grace to love others, or the other way, we make things hard for others. Mostly, mother is the one who practice sacrificial love, carefully, lovingly, taking care of us for ninth months. And afterwards, and same goes to fathers who had to endure in raising us. In the Gospel today, we hear Jesus say, Remain in my love. Remain in Jesus' love is to remain in God's love. That reminds me of why St. Francis of Assisi always enters into caves, staying for prayer and contemplation. It's because for him, it is like entering the wound or the side of Jesus. And there he finds and found, experience God's love. How about us? Do we want to remain in God's love? Because how we love loving others and caring shows us that we are the children of God. Maybe it is a bit difficult for many of us to find and express our love to God. But perhaps let this prayer by Saint John Vianney expresses our difficulty. My God, if my tongue cannot say in every moment that I love you, I want my heart to repeat it to you as often as I draw my breath. And now, in expressing our love to God and to remain with Him, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. 
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.